Welcome back to our webinar series. Today we are going to talk about circular dichroism, CD, which is one of the techniques that we have at our facility, the Biolab. The Biolab is located at the Nova School of Sciences and Technology and gathers in a single unit a unique set of state-of-the-art biophysical and biological techniques, namely circular dichroism, differential scanning calorimetry, flow cytometry, microscale thermophoresis and multiparametric surface plasma resonance. If you are interested in knowing more about us, our website is in the description box of this video. In this presentation, I will talk about the principle and applications of CD, spectral characteristics of some molecules, the comparison of CD and other structural techniques, I will also present to you the instrument that we have in our facility and some application examples. As you might know, circular dichroism spectroscopy is a form of light absorption spectroscopy that measures the difference in absorbance of right and left circularly polarized light. This effect will occur when a chromophore is chiral, optically active, either A, by being intrinsically by reason of its structure, or B, by being covalently linked to a chiral center, or C, by being placed in an asymmetric environment. Being a form of absorption spectroscopy, CD follows the Beer-Lambert law. CD is reported in units of absorbance or ellipticity. Each of these can be normalized for molar concentration of the sample. CD data is commonly reported as ellipticity, which is related to absorbance by a factor of 32.98. The advantage of circular dichroism ellipticity as a measurement unit is that it is more easily related to optical rotation measurements and polarimetry. CD has a broad range of application in different areas such as biochemistry, biophysics, organic chemistry and medicinal chemistry. CD spectroscopy is the technique of choice to study chiral molecules in solution, in particular biologically important molecules such as proteins, nucleic acids and other organic molecules. In the study of proteins, CD is used for secondary structure prediction, tertiary structure fingerprint and detection of conformational changes, which is important for structural analysis of recombinant native proteins and its mutants, to study the effect of experimental conditions on protein conformation, measure protein stability, follow protein folding and study binding interactions. In nucleic, in nucleic acid research, CD is, is used in the determination of nucleic acids conformations and detections of conformational changes that can be used to study binding interactions. In organic chemistry, CD is used, for example, for configurational and conformational analysis of organic compounds. CD bands of peptides and proteins appear in two spectral regions, the far and the near ultraviolet region. In the far ultraviolet region, typically from 180 to 240, the absorbing group is principally the peptide bond. The angles of the bond have distinct, have distinct spectral signatures and for that reason, far UV spectra of proteins depend on secondary structure content. For example, the alpha helix motif displays large CD bands with negative ellipticity at 222 and 208 nanometers and positive ellipticity at 193. Beta sheets exhibit a broad negative band near 218 and a large positive band near 195. While disordered extended chains have a weak broad positive CD band near 217, and a large negative band near 200. The near UV CD of proteins arises from the environments of each aromatic amino acid side chain, as well as possible contributions from disulfide bonds or non-protein cofactors, which might absorb in this spectral region, which is comprised between 260 and 320 nanometers. Each of the aromatic amino acids tends to have a characteristic wavelength profile. The shape and magnitude of the near UVCD spectrum depends on the number of each type of aromatic amino acid present, the mobility of the amino acid, the nature of the amino acid environment, and the amino acid spatial disposition in the protein. 
near UVCD spectra of proteins are not readily amenable to detailed interpretation in terms of tertiary structural features. Nevertheless, near UVCD spectra can be very useful fingerprints for comparisons of tertiary structures between related proteins for example, wild type and mutant proteins and have been invaluable in studies of the molten, molten globule state of proteins. CD in the near UV and visible region can give a great deal of information on the environments of cofactors, which play an integral role in the biological activity of the protein or of other non-covalently bound ligands. Typically, the free ligand or cofactor has little or no CD signal. The observed CD signals in the complex therefore indicate that the binding site of ligand or cofactor confers chirality. The loss of integrity of the binding site during unfolding of the protein can be conveniently monitored by changes in the CD signal. Signy signals are thus excellent indicators of the integrity of the cofactor binding site. In nucleic, in nucleic acids, there are three sources of chirality. First is the asymmetric sugar, especially position C1. This chirality causes monomeric nucleosides to exhibit CD. The second source is the elasticity of the secondary structures adopted by nucleic acids. And the third source of CD results from long-range tertiary ordering of DNA in some environments. Conventional CD spectroscopy operates within the spectral range of about 200 to 320 nanometers. CD provides important information about conformational properties of DNA. The conformational properties include the B family of structures, A form, Z form, guanine quadruplexes, cytosine quadruplexes, triplexes, and other less characterized structures. Regarding CD and organic compounds, this technique is one of the most powerful techniques for stereochemical analysis. It is sensitive to the absolute configuration as well as to conformational features, which are often completely obscured in the ordinary absorption spectrum. All chromophores shown are planar and intrinsically a chiral. Well, however, when emmed in a chiral entity, either a molecule or a supramolecular adduct, they are perturbed by the environment and become CD active. A chiral environment may be provided by a non-chromophoric chiral skeleton which perturbs the chromophore or by a second chromophoric group interacting with the first one. Regarding sample requirements for circular dichroism assays, if you want to obtain CD spectra of proteins in the far UV region, typical cell path lengths are in the range of 0.01 to 0.05 centimeters and protein concentrations are in the range of 0.2 to 1 milligram per milliliter, generally 100 to 500 micrograms of sample, but spectra can be obtained with quantities as low as 10 micrograms. In the near UV region, protein concentrations of 0.5 to 2 milligrams per milliliter is needed and the path length of 0.5 to 2 centimeters. The amounts of protein required are thus of the order of several milligrams. For nucleic acids, CD can work with DNA amounts as low as 25 micrograms. The concentration of DNA can also be very low, up to 20 micrograms per milliliter. Now, regarding the strengths and weaknesses of CD as a structural technique, we can say that X-ray crystallography and NMR are both capable of giving structural information on proteins at atomic level of resolution, whereas CD is a low-resolution structural technique in which overall structural features are described. It is, however, a much less demanding technique, both in terms of sample and time requirements. X-ray crystallography requires that suitably refracting crystals of protein are available, and NMR requires high, high concentrations of the protein and is limited to relatively small proteins or fragments of proteins. Furthermore, CD is versatile because it can explore protein structure and a very wide variety of experimental conditions, and can be used to measure the rates at which structural changes occur. At the BioLab, we have the Chiroscan QCD by Applied Photophysics. This device has the features and accessories required for acquisition of high-quality data, such as a temperature control sample chamber that allows for consistent analytical conditions and continuous temperature ramps. We also have the stop flow accessory. This accessory allows us to characterize 
fast reactions and complement CD spectra with kinetic information. Now, I will talk in more detail and give examples of some CD applications. As previously mentioned, CD can be used to detect conformational changes and measure protein stability. As you know, the unfolding process leads to a loss of structure or structural changes, and this can be seen as a dramatic change of CD spectra. The denaturation can be caused by temperature or by chemical agents, and we can calculate melting temperatures or the Gibbs free energy of unfolding in these assays. The interactions between surfactant and, and enzymes present in laundry and dish detergent products and their impact on the catalytic efficiency represent a central problem and were evaluated in this paper. CD was used to evaluate conformational changes and correlate them with enzyme activity. In this other paper, structural changes and the stability of carbonic anhydrase were evaluated by CD under industrially relevant aqueous conditions, alkaline pH, and these results were correlated with its biocatalytic activity. Secondary structure composition and melting temperatures were determined by analyzing the FARUV spectra. In this case, the physical stability of the recombinant anthrax protective antigen and its labeled analog were investigated as a function of pH and temperature using near and far UV circular dichroism. The biophysical characterization and stability data may provide information useful for the potential development of vaccines. In this other example, CD was used to study the effect of midi platin binding to human serum albumin on protein structure and stability. Analyzing the far UV spectra, the authors observed the changes in the secondary structure of the protein. This is also an example of a study of binding interactions. In this case, they studied the binding of diazepam to human serum albumin using near UVCD. As you can see, at 320, a region that has no contribution from protein CD, there is a significant induction of CD corresponding to the interaction of the chiral diazepam molecule with the chiral protein binding site. The majority of the CD changes observed are due to the induced chirality in the bound diaspam molecule. Stop flow CD was also used in this paper to study the pre-steady state kinetics of the binding interaction. Concerning the detection of nucleic acids conformational changes, as you know, the study of ligand DNA interactions is critical for a complete understanding of replication and transcription processes which are attractive targets for the rational design of anti-cancer and, anti and antibiotic drugs. Most chemotherapeutic anti-cancer drugs currently used come from or are derived from DNA binding ligands, which interact with the DNA duplex. DNA interacting drugs exhibit cytotoxic activity to tumor cell, and for that reason, discovering and designing DNA interacting drugs is very important. The study of drug DNA interactions and the mechanics of drug action is highly important for drug discovery of more efficient and specifically targeted drugs with fewer side effects, and CD can be used as a tool to do that. This nature protocol illustrates the use of CD to study the binding mode and affinity of two well-known DNA binding ligands, ethidium bromide, an intercalator, and butanil, a minor groove binder. In this example, CD was one of the techniques used to evaluate binding interactions of a series of ruthenium arene complexes with mono and bidentate pyridine based ligands with DNA. Ruthenium complexes are emerging as promising alternatives to highly active but toxic platinum complexes as anti cancer drugs. This is an example of CD applied to organic chemistry. In this article, in particular, CD spectrometric titration methodology was used to determine the acid ionization constants of nicotine. Thermostatically controlled instrumentation allowed measurements to be conducted between 20 and 40 degrees Celsius and the change in acid ionization constant with temperature were characterized. 
In this other paper, the authors analyzed the calculated and measured optical rotation together with the electronic circular dichroism and vibrational circular dichroism of the prodigiosine alkaloid streptorubin B to show that these are dominated by two pseudoantiomeric atropoisomers. To finish this webinar, I would like to recommend these resources for further information in CD. Thank you for your attention. And if you have further questions, you can leave them in the comment section of this video or contact me using this email. For more information about the BioLab, this is our website. Thank you once again. Take care.